علي صوتك مع صوت يا هلا You are now listening to Imprint with Nasreen on Yahella Voice. You're listening to Yahella Voice. I'm your host, Nasreen, and this is an all-new interview on the show Imprint. Guests featured on the show left imprints for us to learn and benefit from. Listen to us on our main website at www.yehlavoice.com. Throughout the show, we will be allowing comments and questions via our Facebook page at Yehla Voice, or you could text us at 708 321 She is beautiful, but don't let that fool you because she has the brains and muscles to go along with it. She is the winner of the 2010 Miss USA title and Miss Michigan. She has been trained to be a professional wrestler in WWE. She's on the top 99 most desirable women in 2011. Originally from southern Lebanon, Rima Faki is the first Arab American and Muslim to win Miss USA. Rima, it's a pleasure to welcome you on the show. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to be here today. Rima, so how did it all start? Pageants, winning the title? <laughs> um, actually, I don't know. Um, it's a good question. No one ever started the interview that way. But to be honest, I never saw myself possibly entering a beauty pageant. Um, I used to watch it at a young age, but I was always very short, very shy and a big tomboy. Now, did you have experience prior to going into Miss no. Michigan? I had zero pageant experience, actually. Well, I know that... I think that's what helped me win. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I know that when Being you started out with Miss, Miss Michigan in the contest, you had to give up so much to be there. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, no one really knew. I, was, I had to give up a personal life when it came to just, you know, the fact that I had to work and support myself to compete in Miss Michigan, for example, I sold my car. You had to <laughs> sell I your car to get to Miss Michigan? Yeah, I did. Oh, wow. I, honestly, the, the way it worked out is my father pretty much, in our culture, we're not saying we're religious, but we respect our culture. And a girl normally doesn't leave the house unless she's married. <laughs> Um, my father used to basically tell me you can do whatever you want if you mm -hmm. want to graduate. After I graduated University of Michigan, I wanted to get to New York Law School. My mom gave me the idea of entering a pageant for scholarship reasons. Um, I happened to win Detroit, Wayne County, Michigan, and then USA. Now, when you won, says I'm Kobe Bryant of pageants. Now, when you won Miss Michigan, <laughs> did that help you with receiving scholarships? Yes, of course it did. Um, I had the opportunity to, whether I won USA or not, to be New York Law School. Um, but in everyone's life, I believe you always have a dream and a goal. My goal was to be educated and be my own CEO one day. My dream was to be in front of the camera. So, now, was it specifically case, pageants know. that you envisioned yourself being in, or? No. You know, it's kind of like when I entered Miss USA, again, they told me Michigan has never known that the girl with a nice body, a fitness competition. So I entered a fitness show. I never wanted to be a fitness competitor, but it taught me to wear a bikini uh, on stage, out of walk how to eat healthy and be fit, and I carry that on. Now, speaking so about being fit, I know that in 2006, mm -hmm. you were in a movie named Benefit, Benefruit, I apologize. What do you tell about that? Forbidden Fruit. Forbidden, forbidden yeah, Fruit, I apologize. You know that. That's interesting. <laughs> I well, guess of course so. we know that. <laughs> Maybe. Well, a lot of people don't. Uh, I had an interview earlier today, and... 
They had no idea what I was talking about when I said no. Like, my first movie was in 2003. Well, that's when I shot it. And they're like, what? So you shot it in 2003 <laughs> and then it aired in 2006. We shot it in 2003. My mom actually was the one who found an opportunity and pushed me to go for it. And, um, so what is Forbidden I Fruit? I played a girl that wears a scarf. I was offered a different role. I was offered the girl who was Chaldean that has an African-American boyfriend, but... The role included, you know, making out, being half naked, and I wasn't ready to do that. So I told them I would love to play Amina, who was a uh, uh, Muslim girl. So that was the first time you were on camera prior to being in pageants? Very first time. No, prior to anything. I'd never modeled or done anything. That was my very first opportunity, and it turned out to be a blockbuster in that movie, so, directed by Mark C. So, Rima, after Miss Michigan... You tried out for Miss USA. Yes. What does it take to be Miss USA? Honestly, um, girls might not believe it, but they do not want that peppermint patty. I think we call it pageant patty. They don't want that girl. They want the, that girl that can basically think on her feet. Looking, look like a Victoria's Secret model walking down the stage, but yet if you sit with her, she can, you know, get you so much by just one conversation. So the way Donald Trump likes to refer to it is the reason we don't have a talent portion in our pageant mm-hmm. is because we expect her to be multi-talented. We see our women as the first lady, as the speaker uh, and representer for the United States of America out there. Mm-hmm. Beauty is 50%, but brains come first. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned the portion about having a talent. Now, I know that with pageants, they usually do have a talent portion. And with Miss USA, there wasn't. No, no, no. And I believe that if you look into it, everyone can have a pageant. You, I'm sorry. You can say, Miss Pella Radio 2014. (laughs) Anyone can have a pageant. Mm -hmm. But what is the real touch? Who is the real beauty queen? Let's look at myself, who broke barriers. Let's look at Olivia Coppo, Mm -hmm. who was Miss USA slash recent Miss Universe, dating uh, Nick Jonas, and they're doing a lot of charity work together. You got to look at Miss USA and Miss Universe is the beauty queen that everyone aspires to be. And everything else is imitation in my opinion I don't mean to sound toxic so why did you want to win Sally Davis and I could play a clarinet but I'm not a professional Mm -hmm. but I can sit down with President Obama and pitch a great idea I went with President Clinton to Egypt and spoke on the down the road to goodwill Mm -hmm. I opened up the Valley Centennial Library with the First Lady I'm just saying being Miss USA it doesn't matter if you could play a clarinet or a piano as long as you're a true image of the United States of America. Now, I know you also mm-hmm. spoke at the Ronald Reagan Centennial Celebration. I'm sorry, say that one more time. I know that you also spoke at the Ronald Reagan Centennial Celebration. I have to say that was the highlight of my reign. Well, why don't we take a listen to a clip from your speech? Oh, thank you. I'm very happy for it. Thank you. Go ahead. Last May, when I was crowned Miss USA, it was the proudest moment of my life. But being here now, celebrating the 100th birthday of former President Ronald Reagan, matches the pride and honor I felt that night. The fact that I am the first Muslim and the first immigrant to be crowned Miss USA speaks volumes to the fact that anything is possible in this country. I was a child born in war-torn Lebanon. I have vivid memories of hiding in shelters from the shelling. While hiding and hoping just to stay alive, I could never, never have imagined being here today as an American citizen honoring a man that I consider to be one of the greatest leaders of the 20th century. 
Thank you. This is truly a highlight of my year as Miss USA. You simply cannot be Lebanese and not know and respect President Ronald Reagan. In fact, my uncle, um, who actually immigrated to California, admired the president so much that he named his youngest son after him. So family gatherings are always very interesting. My cousins come, and here we have Qahtan, Raif, Mohammed, Hussein, Ali, and then we have Ronnie. <laughs> Everyone always wonders if he's adopted, but... <laughs> As an economics major at the University of Michigan, I studied President Reagan's policies. He was a man who crafted history. He knew what he wanted to accomplish, and he set out to do it. He brought his supporters and his detractors on a great journey that led to restoring America's economic vitality and global strength. I can think of no better place to be and no better person to recognize in celebrating leadership. Thank you. Now, Rima, among everything that you've done when you were Miss USA, you said this was the highlight. Yeah, it was because imagine being four years old. You are awakened by shattered glass and fighter jets. Mm -hmm. As your older sister grabs you by the ankles that she didn't know what to do, rolls over, puts you on her shoulders. As, as mom and, and, and meet us at the door and my sister. And as we run to go hide under a church, we're screaming for my brother who we couldn't find. And then all of a sudden I'm standing in front of all the members of the White House, including the First Lady, Mrs. Reagan, and so many representatives who are just there. And I'm the honor, I'm the honorary speak and open mm -hmm. this Centennial Library and celebrate the 100th birthday of Ronald Reagan. Now, he, yeah. now when you course, say that you were hiding... Uh, getting the invite mm -hmm. for the Ramadan daughter also at the White House was also a true highlight, but I wasn't able to take it because I was at the time competing from the mm -hmm. Now, when you say you were hiding, you were was this in Lebanon that this occurred? Yes. In Lebanon. I was born in the South. Uh, we escaped throughout different areas during the war. My dad was in New York at the time, back and forth. He was trying to get us out. Um, but, um, we didn't end up leaving until I was seven years old. Now, at what age did you leave Lebanon? Well, I left Lebanon at seven. At seven. We uh, moved to Jamaica, Queens, Jackson Heights, Queens. And uh, I lived there until I was 18. Now, Rima, going back to Miss USA, every contestant yeah. has a reason why she wants to win. Why did you want to win? <laughs> oh, man. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I've been through multiple interviews, as you could say. I have to say, you could always point out the people who really know you. Thank you. And, I'm, and I know that you already know what I'm going to say when it comes to this <laughs> question. <laughs> What do you think I'm going to say? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll tell you. Um, actually, the other day, a few girls met me here. I live in Manhattan Beach, California now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was at the gym, Equinox, and they asked me um, how I was able to locate the cameras when I came out in bikini. And I had the fierce look in my face, and I did a 360 in the middle of the day. So it goes back to your question. And what I was thinking, I wasn't thinking more than the simple fact that two days before that night, I was very close to being dismissed from the fact because of some discriminating blog writers and writing letters to Trump. Mm -hmm. Well, I felt I was going to lose my chance in that pageant. Okay. Um, you know, of course, thankfully I didn't, but... At that time, you know, I was being attacked, and 
instead of letting that decrease my motivation, it only increased it. And that's like my older brother actually for that because he told me, congratulations, why are you upset? People mm -hmm. are hating on you, taking time out of their day. To make an effort to do all of that, obviously you're a threat for a reason. And uh, yeah, I came out with this look in my face like, here I am, I'm mm -hmm. still here. This is America. I am freedom of speech, freedom of religion, the freedom of rights. We speak Zion and I have every right to be. So what Because significance I, does oh, the my crown... Mom would my butt if I didn't have... <laughs> 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 Rima, what significance does the crown have for you? What does it mean to hold the crown? Um, I mean, I don't see this crown as my... People always ask me, oh, you have a nice place. Mm -hmm. Why don't you bring your crown and put it in a nice glass case and everything? Like, you know, one day I will, but um, I that crown is not my crown. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Um... I see this company that belongs possibly in the Arab American Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, where KI, you know, was very honored to be there when it first opened. And because that crown became a mess. I mean, I, when I went to USA, I told them, I didn't know what to say. I told them, talk to me after I have a pizza. I was overwhelmed because I was going towards the crown. Like, okay, I, because I'm Arab, as a Muslim, you're going to try to, you know, Mm -hmm. Tell me I can't be here, you know? But um, I made it, and I feel like that crown is an example. It made history to me. Now, we went on the Miss the USA Martin website. Sorry, people. <laughs> I'm sorry, keep going. Yeah. Rima, on the Miss USA website, it indicates that the contestants are savvy, goal oriented, and aware. They strive to advance their careers, personal and humanitarian goals, and as women who seek to improve the lives of others. How did you improve the lives of others? Um, I can't speak for others, but what I hope I did accomplish is to be that example for a lot of individuals. I'm not saying Arabs, I'm not saying Muslims, I'm not saying immigrants. I'm not saying girls or boys. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that person who sits there every day and says, I want to do this, but, um, you know, these people try to hurt me, and so I'm going to stop doing something. I have to be that example. Well, you people. are also the ambassador so, of the Pink Fund. Mm -hmm. Just a back, yes. background information, the Pink Fund is a financial assistance organization and Rima dedicated to helping remove the short-term financial burden for breast cancer patients. I was, um, before I was Miss Michigan, um, yeah, really, I, uh, I met Molly, mm -hmm. I think it was after I was Miss Michigan, I met Molly, um, she was the founder of the organization. Now and I, I have, you know, with a lot of different events. Mm -hmm. But after you win Miss USA, um, you carry on Susan G. Coleman, who is, um, yeah, the Guild of Club. You know, you do a lot of different work with breast and ovarian cancer as well. But I also did drugs. Now, I know that you were also part of assisting in breast and ovarian cancer education as well. What do you tell us about that? See, the education goes a long way because our Arab, I mean, women, Arab American, and you know, before I was in the USA, I used to volunteer at the Access at the Arab American Community Service Center. I was a social worker, um, and then later on I became part of AmeriCorps. I volunteered with the American, Arab American Museum. But I realized that a lot of Like, I'm speaking over 65% of Arab women, Arab American women, are not familiar with um, mammograms and getting self checked and then going for, you know, breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So they had no idea how to do that. So I did a lot of things because I spoke Arabic. 
I spoke a little Spanish and, and I was doing really well translating. So when I moved to Michigan, I took part in that, educating them on how to look for a lump and self check and mammograms and diets and eating healthy and how much it makes. It goes a long way with, with we're going to go into more detail about the accomplishments that Rima has, as well as more information about her Miss USA 2010 pageant right after the short break. Listen to the radio, listen to your voice. Halawiyat Nablis, la kol anwa al Barma, ma حلويات نابلس هم الوحيدين اللي عندهم الجبنة النابلسية الأصلية والعجينة مطبوخة على إيديهم من A to Z مش زي الناس التانيين بيشتروها جاهزة ومش بس هيك لا 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 كمان هلأ وصل أبو أحمد عطوان مع خبرة الأربعين سنة في حلويات جبر الأردن نابلس ويتس 8320 South Harlem Avenue in Bridgeview تلفون نمبر 708-529-3911 Get $10 off when you spend $40 and $5 off if you spend $20. ادخل على ياهلافويس.com أو صفحة ياهلافويس على الفيسبوك للحصول على الكوبونات. ياهلافويس cares. Mention us to get hired. If you are a fryer, a grill cook, you are wanted. Call Mike, he is hiring now. Call Mike now at 773-557-5555. Mike is looking for a fryer and a grill cook. Call us now at 773-557-5555. وأنا لما حكيت طلباتك ما بتخلص ما كنت غلطان. هي عليك أنت أصلاً تتفرج على الزاب تي في أكتر مني. أو لا كل هالقنوات العربية والأخبار والرياضة وبدون دفعة شهرية صدقيني الزاب تي في هي أحسن شيء جبناه من يوم معرفتي. طيب مني هلا بدنا نعمل أبكريت لأنه الزاب 509 طلع وليش أبكريت وإن شاء الله بدنا نقعد ندفع مصاري وسعر جديد كمان لا لا أول شيء الزاب الجديد فيه واي فاي أقوى ويوتيوب أسرع وحطوا نتفليكس وكمان ما بندفع إلا نص السعر وإذا بنعطيهم الزاب القديم أو أي نوع آي بي تي في يعني مش ضروري يكون الزاب عن جد؟ خلاص يلا يلا اعمل أبكريت للزاب اللي عنا www.zaptvlive.com زاب تي في the world is in your hands. Send us a text message and win. 708-321-1313. Write your name and email in a text message and win. Text us. Text us. Text us. 708-321-1313. Yahala Voice, the Arab voice in America. America. And we're back on the show Imprints with our guests for today, former Miss USA 2010, Rima Faki. You're listening to us on our main website at www.yahalavoice.com. Rima, I want to visit a portion of the Miss USA 2010 pageant. Part of the competition, you have to wear a bathing suit. Yes. What reaction did you expect to receive from Arabs and Muslims in the community? I didn't think about it, actually. I mean, um, I mean, first I thought about it, you know, I was not concerned about that I was concerned about what my father thought that my father so what does he think he accepted he told me that he saw that as a sign of health and fitness and that he knows that I, how much I do in the community and he trusts me and I'm a good girl and mm -hmm. wearing a bikini shouldn't be a bigger example than not wearing a bikini and being a bad person in real life so, mm -hmm. to me, my father was the only, I mean, the only person's opinion I cared about. But was it a challenge after with the community? It was a challenge, you know. <laughs> uh, How? I mean, it was a challenge not, 
not in the sense that I wore a bikini, but in the sense of they used that against me. I mean, is that, I mean, I get the media is really harsh, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just, I guess I expected my people to stand by me. So I take it as you were disappointed with the outcome from the bikini. Uh, they were disappointed in the bikini. I was disappointed that they didn't have my back. Mm -hmm. Not everybody. I'm not speaking for everyone. I'm just speaking about the ones I used to be part of and was looking for the same feedback. But I guess not. Mm -hmm. You know, you Rina... don't look that way. You know, I just, I mean, you know, I didn't see it as something bad. I just thought it's okay. You know, everyone has their own. My mom told me that everyone has their own, you know, opinions and that that's the privilege they had growing up. They didn't have the same privilege you had. So I accept it. I can't begin to imagine all the stuff that you had to deal with or are still dealing with after the title. Uh, also, I know that shortly after there was a controversy with a photo that was posted on what appears to be you pole dancing. What's that about? You know, that goes, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't help out. Um, it's just funny because people keep bringing it up. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the same situation when I got the DUI, you know. They say I get pulled over, but yet they don't, and then and stories are reported, mm -hmm. but yet there's no pictures or videos, you know what I mean? It's like, and then I win the case, but nobody reports that. They only report the fact that I was in there. It's like So why don't you clarify that, for us? Well, I mean, I'm not trying to clarify anything because everyone has their own mm -hmm. opinion. And for me, when it came to those pictures, it was 2006. It was, um, you know, like crunch gym, you know, pole dancing class. Yesterday, my friend and I did, um, um, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to say the name, but it's the, you know, for the women's like derriere. derriere you know, class, mm -hmm. and um, at Equinox, and this class was pole dancing class, and those pictures were my pictures, you know, at the time I had a friend who I, I trusted, but I was wrong too, mm -hmm. who had kept, held on to those pictures, and sold them as under the impression that I was a stripper, but it was just a gym class, Okay, and it was actually 8 o'clock in the morning that day. No. Rima, I'm aware that it's not only the Arab community that you face a hard time from. It was actually on both ends. Uh, just to put this in perspective, you were born in Lebanon, moved to New York, then later to Dearborn. In the eyes of many Americans, you're an immigrant, Arab, and Muslim. I mean, the geographical cultural stereotypes rose to a point where individuals started to say you do not even deserve the title. What do you say about that? Um, I said actions speak louder than words. I would love to ask those people what they think now. I mean, it, it's, the title isn't something that, to me, was more than the simple fact of stereotypical racism, social, profi social profiling, everything that every single race and religion has been through. Every single race and religion, at some point, faced the same thing that I go through still till today. I mean, I just had a Instagram post of a video mm -hmm. when I had left San Francisco the other day. I didn't feel right. You know, I was asked by TSA and in front of everybody, not even behind a curtain, and they never even asked me if I can go behind a curtain. They, you know, second checked me and it was, I, I didn't feel comfortable. Now, if you want me to open up, and this is what I feel, I've never... Uh, on Instagram, I just said, oh, I was randomly selected again. How random is that? But mm -hmm. I felt upset. I did. I'm sorry. I want to cry right now because the lady literally went up and down my legs and everything in front of everybody. And there were men whistling. You know, it just that to me mm -hmm. is worse than that. What did he tell you? Picture or me in a bikini. That hurt more. What did he tell you? Where I mean, I didn't say anything. I know it's. I mean, I know if I say something. I mean, I don't know. I. I mean, I guess it's proceed. You know, protocol. But mm -hmm. that time, I, this time, I don't know. It was a couple of incidents. One time, it was in Africa, but this is the second time where I just didn't feel right. And you know, I think Miss USA, uh, 2003, had an incident like this about two years ago too. But. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think it was as bad as this one. And I never, you know, I don't know. I mean, we all face these things, you know, it's just, it's kind of like the only strong survive. But at the same time, you know, if we don't all stand together and just accept the fact that uh, as an American, you're never an American. You're American French, you're American mm -hmm. Arab, you're American Italian, you're American, you know. And a religion is not an ethnicity. It's not American Muslim. I mean, Muslim is a religion. Mm -hmm. So I'm an American Arab Muslim. Definitely. Now, Rima, I want to surface another reaction, and I would love to know about it. It's when you made the switch from Miss USA to WWE show Tough Enough. We're going to talk about it right after this. Yeah, that's good. Let's switch it. Becoming Miss USA was easy. They're going to think, oh, beauty queen, she's too, oh my god, oh my god, I broke it out. Becoming a WWE superstar, now that's tough. Maybe I'm crazy, but then again, that's WWE. Give her another one. WWE Tough Enough, a new reality series. Premieres Monday, April 4th, following Raw on USA. Characters welcome. Bumps. And I didn't just take bumps, I took body slams as well. <laughs> How's that Matt feel, Miss USA? Give her another one. Hey, let me tell you something. She's tough. She's beautiful. She's smart. She speaks well on her feet. Uh, you can never catch her off guard. She has great composure. She has a lot of the qualities it takes to be successful in this business. Uh, and we'll see if she's tough enough to find success in this business. But I was really impressed with her. But, you know, uh, I get a kick out of watching people take bumps and get and slams and you see if they like contact or they don't like contact some people are allergic to that mat and so uh, it's it's highly entertaining Rima for those who aren't as familiar with tough enough tell us what the show is about um, basically it's about 15 independent wrestlers who inspire to be a superstar, which is a male wrestler for WWE, or a diva, which is a female wrestler for WWE. In this competition, they vote somebody off every week, and the last person that stays gets a contract with WWE. And it's uh, girls versus guys. It does. It's. I mean. I mean. Um, guys and guys, guys and girls. It's like okay. not like girl. You know what I mean? More, what do you call it? <laughs> it's mixed. A, it's only. It's. Uh, it's not unisex. It's unisex. Oh, it is unisex. Okay something I didn't actually know until I got there. <laughs> I thought it was a thing. I, had, I was the only one that had zero, absolutely zero wrestling experience. But so, I, hey, I made it for a month, and the only reason I left wasn't because I, I was voted off. It's because I had three fractured ribs, which uh -huh. I was trying to hide. Well, given that. that you didn't have any wrestling experience, what made you want to get into wrestling? I know that many people are probably shocked about it. I mean, Miss USA is now in wrestling. Well, why not? Why can't a woman be tough? If you look it up, um, when I won Miss Michigan, I was the very first beauty queen to ever provide a free self-defense class at the YMCA by two SWAT team trained females for women. And it was booked every Saturday. Mm -hmm. I mean, why? In Detroit, I did that because at the time, economy was really bad. And here's something people don't know. Detroit looks worse I bet you than Afghanistan. I mean, in every block, you only have three houses still standing. Mm -hmm. So women were the first target for people who are hungry. So these classes were for women. And when I had this opportunity provided by Paul Sugar, the president of the Universal Organization, I said, oh, of course I want to do it. Let's go to war. <laughs> Let's look. And, and you know what? When I was on the show, it's funny because the director was like, oh, by the way, it said, enter beauty queen, exit beauty queen. I said, what? There's a script? <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. That's a bet. That's the bet that the interns So they placed to. bets on that. Well, because I was on the show, they thought I was like a pinata for everyone to pick on. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know. I'm like, come on, people, think about it. I was like born in South Lebanon, mm -hmm. raised in Queens. And then... I moved to Detroit. I mean, the only thing I'm missing is Compton. Mm -hmm. I'm already tough. <laughs> <laughs> Given where you lived, yeah, I bet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, do you think that with everything that you've done, not only Arab American woman or Muslim woman, do you think that you've opened doors for women in general? I Yes, I can say yes to that question because you told me if I've changed people's lives. 
I don't know, but if I've opened doors, yes. I received this emails and fan mail. You could ask my friend who's next to me. We were just kind of like admiring the fact that I just got this place in Manhattan Beach. And my fan mail started to come in and it's like Belgium, Germany, Poland, like Texas, mm -hmm. Yemen. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, it's great. It feels great. And people tell me things like, oh, well, because of you, I'm going to go after ice skating. And... Um, oh, Rima, I entered the Special Olympics, you know, because of I also do stuff with Best Buddies organization. Like, these things to me make a big difference. So you've become a role model for women. Became, well, actually, women and men. You know, my my number one fan, he's probably listening, his name is Marvin, he's from Paris. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like a fan of my biggest fan because it's like, you know, he, he motivates me sometimes. So it's like to see the fact that what I did on Tough Enough, the fact what I did in real life and everything like that inspires them, inspires me. Well, we'll definitely say hello to Marvin then. <laughs> Thank you. Rima, I want to touch on what you're working on now. I'm finishing my book. Um, the book? So tell us about the book. <laughs> okay, um, here's something I, I think everyone should know. I've been writing since I was 12, but someone, uh, my teacher in high school, John, Mr. Smith, um, Mr. Adams, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, we used to have a club called The Great Gatsby Club, actually, for the book, which okay. is now a big movie. But at the time, this was in uh, 2001. Me and Mr. Smith, we, uh, Mr. Adam, I call him Smith. Anyway, we <laughs> decided to write five things I wanted to accomplish uh -huh. in the next 10 years. And he asked me to put that in um, somewhere safe. So I put it in the Quran. And I remember I wrote. One, I wanted to make history. Mm -hmm. Two, I wanted to build my father a house in Sifa, Lebanon. Three, I wanted um, to finish my book before I'm 30. And four was to move out of my fa the family's house before, without having to get married. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there a marriage coming up, uh, coming along? <laughs> And I swear, this is so funny. Sorry, Dad. This is, by the way, like one of the first real interviews I've had in a while because I've been living overseas. But five, the fifth one was to um, finish uh, my passport pages because mm -hmm. I want to travel the world. And I'm happy to say I've accomplished three out of the five. The fourth one is my book, which um, I reached 30 in 2015. That's why. And I've been writing since I was 12. I What's never the name of the book? I haven't picked a name but it's definitely so tell us what it's about it's about you know it's about my journey because I've been writing since I was 12 so you kind of get the sense of what why and like kind of it's kind of weird but all right because I used to not believe in keyboards or anything mm -hmm. all my writing is on paper and pen I decided I couldn't type all my 36 journals up so what I'm going to do is I decided to start writing which I already did what I did now is I kind of turned like how people turn reality into movies mm -hmm. like um, Syriana or Modern Family. I'm doing that with my book. So instead of retyping my journals, I take snap pics of my journals sometimes and let you kind of read the words that I felt at the moment. Mm -hmm. Like the day when I was questioned if I was related to anyone with Hezbollah. Like... And I felt very discriminated. I wrote about that. And you can tell the picture of that page is capitalized letters. And, you know, it looked like I was very, very hurt and angry. And, like, mm -hmm. spots were, like, wet from tears. Like, I want people to see that. Now, this is going to start with you living in Lebanon and then making it, yeah. making it in America. It's going to go from me starting in Lebanon, New York, Detroit, Miss USA, then running into a lot of difficulties and then coming back up, you know? Now, Rima, before we go, I want you to tell me about your plans for the near future. What do you have planned? Um, I take it day by day, but where I see myself in five years, a mother, a wife, uh, coming out with my third book, um, and definitely launching my own organization. So what do you have planned for an organization? What type of organization? A multi-purpose, but mostly concentrating on children because that's my true passion. I love kids. I mean, that's why I see Angie Angelie as my role model 
She's the United Nations ambassador. She's adopted children from all over the world, including Syria.、Mm-hmm. She, a mother, a wife, an actress. I mean, come on, she does it all. And that's been my motivation since I first saw her in the movie Gia, actually.、Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, Rima, before we go, why don't you give a word of advice for any woman that are wanting to go into a field in media or be, be, become known or in, in the celebrity field? Okay, in the celebrity field and becoming well known and in the media, you have to be your number one fan first. To a point where, I know this is gonna sound silly, but let's relate to people. Here's what it is, girls.、Mm-hmm. To a point where nobody can take a bad picture of you. You don't even have to look. When people take a pic and say, let's Instagram it, you don't, need, you don't have, to have to check it. You already know you look good. You have to know. <laughs>、yes. That's the problem that women have. Honey, They take millions of、I'm、photos. Here, like, I wear outfits I never try on because I just know I'll rock it. You know what I mean? You gotta, I'm not saying, hey, I'm not, it's, it's called big headed to people, call、mm-hmm. it big headed, I don't care, but I'm a very humble person. Not big headed, I would say it's confidence.、Hey. I've never dyed my hair. I've never had plastic surgery. I'm blessed. I'm、mm-hmm. not saying that it's a bad thing. Maybe later on, ladies, I might do a little lifting depending on the <laughs> age of my husband. But, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, girls, someone very smart once said to me, and she's the best, best runway walker in the、mm-hmm. world ever. She said, Rima, when you walk out on stage, you're only thinking two things. Look at it. Two people are looking at me right now. Those who want to be me and those who want to marry me. Thank you very much. Words of wisdom right there. <laughs> Work it, ladies. <laughs> well, Rima, I'd like to thank you for being with me today on the show Imprint. Once more,、so、we、It's、were with the beautiful. I hope to come back again because I actually of course. just was offered a movie role. So maybe you might be the first interview I do after we would love that. And if you're in Chicago,、thing. we would love to have you in the studio. Thank you so much. Dream big, guys. Don't forget. Once more, we were live with the 2010 Miss USA, Rima Fakhi. She's beautiful, smart, 